This is the NAD M10 V2. And it always amazes me just how much technology NAD have been able to pack into this very tiny box. But behind me are some not so tiny boxes. Behind me, still in their boxes, are the Dynaudio Focus 50, streaming active wireless speakers. But what do the Dynaudio Focus 50 and the NAD M10 V2 have in common? Well, it's quite a few things actually, but one major similarity is that they both feature Dirac Live room correction. And as you can see down here, I work as a professional Dirac Live calibrator. And I have a website dedicated to the service that I offer. And through that website, I receive maybe two or three inquiries a day. Sometimes it's an inquiry to make a booking with me. Sometimes it's a person who's building a whole new system and they want to make sure, have the reassurance that there'll be someone there for them to get the best out of it once the system is built. But sometimes somebody contacts me and it's normally for a hi-fi system they contact me because they want me to calibrate their system. They want me to get the best sound out of their system, but they don't realize that, that Dirac Live doesn't feature in it. They don't realize that they need something to be able to add Dirac Live to their hi-fi system. So this video is a guide, a guide for beginners, how to add Dirac Live to nearly any hi-fi system. Not a guide to how to use Dirac Live, but a guide to help people understand how you can add it to nearly any hi-fi system. A quick bit of technical background. Dirac is an international audio technology company that works in many different industries. But Dirac Live is their product for home audio. So that's the product that we, you know, audiophiles are interested in. And it's called a room correction system, but I prefer to call it or term it as a sound management system. That is how I better see what it does or what it allows us to do. And I've been using Direct Live for at least five years, probably more than five years. And as a calibrator, I've used it to improve the audio quality for well over a hundred different audio systems, hi-fi and home cinema here in the UK and international abroad as well. So I do have a huge amount of experience using it and a huge amount of experience using it to improve the sound quality of lots of people's audio systems. And Dirac Live is now the de facto room correction solution within home cinema, especially now your big companies like Denon Morantz, Pioneer and Onkyo are featuring Direct Live in their AVRs for 2023 and onwards. So that is huge for the home cinema space. But what about hi-fi? Well, no surprise that the adoption of this excellent technology is still very slow for hi-fi, but I know there are a lot of audio files, lots of audio files that would really like to add it, really like to have the benefit of what Dirac Live can offer within their hi-fi systems. And to add Dirac Live to a hi-fi system, for me, there are three main ways. But before I explain those individual ways, I think it could really help to explain just how Dirac Live works. And it actually works quite similar to Rune, and I'm sure a lot of audiophiles understand the way Rune works. So in a similar way to Rune, Dirac Live has a core, or really a brain, I suppose you could call it, and you also have an endpoint. The Dirac Live core is a free software you download from the Dirac website. And this is probably what most of you are familiar with or have seen before, the graphical interface. There is also now a Dirac Live app that will run the core software on tablets, but I haven't used that. I always use the core software on a computer, normally a laptop for mobility reasons. And I've used it with Windows. More recently, I've been using it with Mac and it works exactly the same on both. In fact, the Dirac Live core software always works exactly the same regardless of the end point that that you will be using in the system. But the endpoint is obviously really, really important, just like it is with Rune. So an endpoint, a Dirac Live endpoint might be something like your NAD M10 V2. It might be something like your Dynaudio Focus 50, 30 or 10 speakers, maybe an Arcam SA30 stream and amplifier. But what's really important, just like with Rune, is that you have to have a Dirac Live endpoint within your hi-fi system for the Dirac Live core, the core brain, the core software to talk to. And for the core brain, the software, Dirac Live core software, to send its corrective calculations and what it's doing processing-wise 
it has to send it to that endpoint. And then the corrections, everything that happens with the software lives on the endpoint. So again, just to stress that, you have to have a Dirac Live endpoint somewhere within your Hi-Fi system. But I think this needs explaining just a little bit better because there is one key difference with how Dirac Live works compares to Room. Once you're finished, once you've done all your calibration work and calculations using the core software, once you've uploaded or downloaded or, you know, sent your files to the endpoint, the core software goes away. So you don't need the computer or laptop anymore. The files just live on the endpoint. And then really, I guess you just forget about them and just concentrate on the music. I mentioned three main ways of adding Direct Live to any hi-fi system. Or I suppose really adding a Dirac Live endpoint to any hi-fi system. And by far the easiest way is to buy a product that is Dirac Live enabled. So that could be something like NAD's M10 V2 or their M33 streaming amplifiers. So there are other products within the NAD range that feature Dirac Live. It could be Again, Arcam SA30 streaming amplifier or the ST60, I think it is just streaming DAC or maybe JBL's SA750, their streaming amplifier that features direct live. Or maybe you could just buy streaming active wireless speakers like from Dyn Audio in the Focus 10, 30 and 50. So that is, this is definitely the easiest way. Buying a, a direct live enabled product like a streaming amplifier is definitely the easiest way. But there are a couple of things to consider here because depending on what product you buy will depend on what Dirac Live license is included. So just let that sink in for a second. If you buy a product from the Harman Group, something like a, a JBL or an Arcan, included with them for the retail price is a full correction suite from Dirac, so a full frequency correction. So that's bass, mid-range, and treble. However, if you buy an NAD product like the M10 or the M33, they come with a limited range license. So essentially you can only direct live correct base only. But you can buy an additional license for $99 to give you access to the full frequency so you can correct for bass, mid-range and treble. So I think that's pretty simple and easy enough stuff. And all of the licenses that you will buy will, will be bought direct from the Dirac website. So you give your money to Dirac, not to NAD or not to anybody else. But slightly different again, with the Dyn Audio Focus 10, 30, and 50 is that they are only Dirac Live enabled products. So you will need to buy a license to use Dirac Live with them. And there are two licenses available. No surprise, you could buy the limited range license or a base only license for $159, or you can buy the full license. So bid base, mid range, and treble corrections for $249. And you can upgrade from one to the other at any time. But the second thing to consider with this, and this is something that I would advise anybody and everybody does, the first thing you should do is go to the Dirac website and create an account. And it's totally free to do so. But the reason this is important is because when you do a Dirac Live calibration using the core software, you want to log into your account first because Dirac logs your account with your calibration, with your hardware configuration. So if you want to be able to access your calibration files later down the line, say for example, something changes or goes wrong or something like that, whatever it could be, you want to access those files later, you will need to be logged into your account. So again, the first thing I would advise you to do is go to the direct website, direct.com, and just set yourself up an account. And this is especially important if you are going to be buying any of the licenses that you need, maybe the upgrade license for the NAD or just any license for the Focus speakers, because you'll go on the Direct website, go to the online store, find the product that you're looking to buy the license for, buy your license, you are then emailed a code. And all you need to do is copy and paste that code into the activate licenses section of your account page, copy and paste it into there, activate it, and then you're done forever. And the license is a one-off payment license. So it's not a monthly subscription or anything like that. It's a one-off payment license that should last as, as long as you do or as long as the hardware does. So 
So buying a Hi-Fi product that features Direct Live is definitely the easiest way to add it to a Hi-Fi system, but it's also a very limiting way because you might not want an NAD or an RCAM or JBL Hi-Fi system. You might not want streaming active wireless speakers if you are an audiophile who loves the sound of tubes. But the, the, the problem is still there. It doesn't matter whether you're listening to glowing bulbs, spinning silver discs, or streaming music from the cloud. The room acoustical problems are always there and they're always the same. So the most flexible way of adding Direct Live to nearly any hi-fi system is to add or buy or include one of the many different mini DSP units that feature Direct Live. And there is literally something here for pretty much everyone. Or a better way to describe it would be there is a solution that will fit into nearly any hi-fi system. And mini DSP units can be really very much audio Swiss Army knives, especially if you're using their SHD range because they can be a music streamer, they can be a DAC, they can be an amplifier, they can be a pre-amplifier, and they can be a headphone amplifier, and they can be other alternative bass management. Mini DSP units really are very much audio Swiss Army knives, depending on which product you buy. That frustrates me a little bit because it means you may be paying for features you're not going to use, but yeah, looking at it from the other way around, it could be great to add some of these features. Maybe you can find a use for them. But my advice with purchasing a mini DSP unit is always do your homework first. You need to make sure the unit you buy has the right connections for you, digital connections ideally coming into it, and then the correct digital connections coming out for it to fit into your hi-fi system. I'll talk more about that in a second. But one of the cool things about mini DSP products is that they all come with the full frequency correction license from Direct Live straight out of the box. So you don't need to buy any additional licenses with them. And then for the best placement of a mini DSP unit within a hi-fi system, my advice is to place it in between the source and the DAC. So the source could be anything really. It could be a CD player, it could be a music server or a streamer, maybe even a turntable. And then place the mini DSP unit in between those sources and your DAC because that way, all the digital processing that Dirac is doing, with the, obviously with the exception of a turntable, but any digital source, CD player, music streamer, everything stays digital until it gets to the DAC. Rather than if you put the mini DSP unit after the DAC, then there's more A to D conversions going on. So for me, it makes sense, put the mini DSP unit as close to the source as possible and before your DAC, because then all your DAC sees is a, it's a music signal. It doesn't know any different. That means your amplifier doesn't know any different. It means your speakers, they don't know any different. They're just playing the signal that they're being sent. And the cool thing about a mini DSP unit, again, is the flexibility. So you could add Dirac Live correction to a tube preamplifier, tube power amplifiers, and any speaker that you want. Now there is one other way to add Direct Live to a hi-fi system and that is with software, with software only. And to get the Direct Live software, you would need to buy it from the Direct website. And to do so, you'd need to go into the studio section of Direct and purchase the stereo correction suite, which is $349. And from there, everything is exactly the same. You use the core software in exactly the same fashion. The only difference is the Direct Live endpoint is also on the computer. So the computer becomes really the used for the core and for the endpoint. And there are Rune solutions, computer-based music servers that do this for Rune in the exact same way. I think the only difference with this kind of setup is that that computer needs to be the music source. But that could be perfect for you if you are using a laptop or a, or a Mac or a Mac Mini or any type of computer, maybe a really high-end dedicated computer you've built yourself. Direct Live as software can be used on any of these so long as the computer is the music source. But I think the only thing to consider with this is that I know a lot of different audio files use different software players. There's loads of different you know, computer software players out there. So my advice would be use the Direct Live st Stereo Correction Suite two-week trial to test things out just to make sure you can get Direct Live working properly before you invest the $349 in purchasing the software. Just makes you know common sense to do that. Now, Dirac does provide excellent technical support. They've got me out of you know a number of problems over the years, but 
I am not Dirac Technical Support. So if you have any problems, you need any help, contact Dirac. Once you've got it all working and you want to you know, get the best sound from your system, well, that's the time when you contact me. I want to finish the video talking about two more very important things. The first one is you might have heard me say on a number of occasions, pretty much any hi-fi system or nearly all hi-fi systems. And that is because if you are using any of the all-in-one types of streaming amplifiers, like your name Atom, or maybe your Cambridge Audio Evo, or maybe your Audio Lab Omnia, it's then very difficult to add Dirac Live to these products, purely because they have the DAC, the source, and the amplifier all contained in the one box and then you can't you know, slot a mini DSP anywhere into that solution. But it might be possible to add Direct Live to these with an external source. So maybe you could use a mini DSP unit as the streamer, Direct streamer with a Direct correction file played digitally into the streaming amplifier and then it goes onto the speakers from there. So it's possible still to add Direct Live to even the streaming amplifiers, but I haven't tried this solution to say that it definitely works. But sometimes when there's a will, there's a way. And this is also true if you're using an all-in-one streaming DAC. That's really difficult because, again, there's nowhere to put the mini DSP unit between the streamer and the DAC. So bear that in mind. It's not a criticism. Just bear that in mind. And if you want, I suppose, an all-in-one type of streaming product that features Dirac Live, well then, NAD's M10, M33 and some others, or the Arcam SA30, etc. Those are the types of products that I would point you to. And the last thing I'd like you to think about is some essential tools for the job. NAD and Arcam products and JBL products, they come with a measurement microphone. But my advice would be leave those microphones in the box and spend the money and invest in a mini DSP UMIC 1 measurement microphone or maybe spend a little bit more and get a UMIC 2 microphone. Most people I advise to get the UMIC 1 I personally use a UMIC 2 because it's easy for me to justify the extra cost. I think the UMIC 2 is better, but most people will be more than happy, more than fine using a UMIC 1. And I know what you're probably thinking, wow, I've just bought a Hi-Fi product, now I need to spend even more money on a measurement microphone, but everything you do with Dirac Live is based off of the measurements that you take. So those measurements are really, really important and you need a tool, you need a professional quality tool for taking those measurements. And a mini DSP, UMIC one, I think will cost about 120 pounds. So it's not an, inc yeah, 120 pounds, $120. So it's not a crazy amount of money, but it's money well spent. The second thing I would advise you to buy is a microphone boom stand. You know a microphone stand, the one you've always used to see in or maybe on a, you know, a stage, but with an arm, a boom arm because that will make your life a thousand times easier again for taking the measurements that you need to do for Dirac Live. But you only need a cheap one and Amazon normally sell them for about I don't know, 20, 25 pounds. Just buy the cheapest one, that's all you need. But again, it's definitely worth the investment, it's definitely worth spending the money on it. Now, if you hired me as a calibrator, I would bring all of these tools with me. So you, you wouldn't need to spend the money on those. That would all be included, obviously, in the, you know, in, in the service that I would provide. But I can only do that for people that I visit, obviously, people in the UK. If I'm doing a calibration, a remote calibration for someone outside of the UK, well, then I have to insist that they have these products. They have the microphone and the stand because I really do think they are essential tools. So hopefully this video has been helpful to anyone who is considering adding Direct Live to their Hi-Fi system, but they wasn't quite sure how they would do it, what would be the best way ways to do it and maybe what would you know what they would need and again the three main ways the, you've got the easy way I think you've got the flexible way and the software only version that's definitely the most cost effective way so three different ways of doing it and I think from those three different ways nearly everybody should be covered with those and I think that's absolutely fantastic and of course I hope more products come to market in the future that feature direct life more hi-fi products streamers streaming DACs streaming amplifiers I really do and I hope that is the case but one last thing to think about is that Dirac Live is not as a solution it's it's excellent it's really powerful but it's not just a, a press a button walk away type of solution do expect some learning curve involved do expect there to be yeah some you know some time do expect to have to invest some time into it with for the learning curve to understand how to use it but most importantly how to get the best out of it so just factor that in but I would say you know enjoy it enjoy the journey enjoy the learning curve however if you don't have the time 
or you don't really have the inclination to want to learn and yet you still want to get the absolute best sound you can from Direct Live for your hi-fi system or your home cinema system, well then, haha, <laughs> you know where I am. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. hope you found it useful and helpful. As you can probably tell, I'm a little bit under the weather this week, so it made sense to push this video out this week because, you know, I haven't really been able to do much listening this week and I've got so many amazing products here to review at the moment. It's pretty crazy.